When I was a kid, one of my favorite places to go in the whole world was my grandmother's house. She lived in South Paris, Maine. About 2,000 people lived there, totally rural, and there's lots of forests everywhere. We'd get to my grandmother's big farmhouse, and we'd just immediately go off into the woods behind her property because it was like this vast expanse of wilderness. But as soon as it got dark at night, we would all be quick to go back inside because there was huge animals that lived in the wilderness of Maine and you just didn't want to be out there past dark. And at night, I'd be looking out at this dark forest from the safety of my room and I would always be so scared that a set of eyes were gonna look back at me from somewhere in this dark forest. Luckily, that never happened to me. It did happen to a family just north of my grandmother's house, and it wasn't just one set of eyes, it was five. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you come to the right place, because that's all I do, and I post three, four, even five times every week. If that's of interest to you, then I would encourage you to waterboard the like button, and then subscribe to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. In 2005, Eric Martin was working in a paper mill in Maine, and he had been working at this paper mill for 20 years, and he was reaching up to get something on a shelf when he threw his back out. And in fact, he had slipped a number of discs, and it ultimately meant he was not able to work anymore. He was going to be disabled. And so he's suddenly out of work. His wife, Shelly Martin, was not working at the time, but when he couldn't work, she needed to get a job. And so Shelly, who had not worked in a long time, was able, through some connections, to land a job in her hometown in Maine called Palmyra. Palmyra was a very small, rural community. I mean, we're talking maybe 1,200 people that lived there. They also had a 17-year-old daughter named Chelsea who was not eager to go, but it was the only place they could afford and so they had to go. Luckily, because Palmyra was such a cheap place to live relative to where they had been living, that for less money, they actually ended up getting a bigger piece of property than they had lived in before. It's this beautiful farmhouse that sat on a whole bunch of acreage but it was incredibly isolated. You had to go down this bumpy access road to get to their long driveway. And then once you were on the property, you'd look out and it was just a full 360 degrees of very dense forest that virtually no one was in. There was no nature trails. It was just dark, dense forest everywhere you looked. So even though no one's that happy about it, they end up moving into this farmhouse. And as they're unpacking their truck, Eric picks up one of his many rifles that he owned. Eric came from a long line of hunters. He loved to hunt. It was his favorite thing to do and he had a whole bunch of guns that he kept. And as he's carrying the rifle into the house, Shelly says, oh no, we're not keeping the guns in the house. You have a barn. You're going to put your guns in there. This had always been a point of contention for them in their marriage. Shelly just didn't feel safe having guns in the house, especially having kids in there. And so ultimately Eric agrees, okay, fine. I won't put my guns in the house. I'll put them in the barn. And so he went in the barn and he and his son, Sean, who he had come out to help him, they built this gun case for all of his rifles. It was very heavy duty. They put it in the barn and then they locked that and then locked the barn itself. So they were totally secure in the barn, but definitely not readily accessible. Over that first year, Shelly and Eric developed this ritual where at the end of the day, they would go out on the front porch of their farmhouse and look out onto the front yard and they would drink coffee. It was something they both looked forward to and virtually every night they did this. And so almost exactly a year after moving in, it was in early 2006, Shelly and Eric are sitting on their front porch enjoying their coffee, they're chatting, and Shelly thinks she sees something in the woods. Now, you have to understand the layout and how far away they are from the woods to get a sense of what they were seeing. Right in front of their porch was a gravel road where they parked their cars. About 20 meters away from their house to the left is their barn, and beyond the barn, basically straight out from the porch, is this huge open field where there's no trees or anything. It was like open grazing area. And then way beyond the field was the beginning of this tree line of this really dense forest. So we're talking at least a couple hundred meters away where she sees these lights. And she described it as like a pulsating light. It did not look like a car or some sort of vehicle, not to mention there was no road out straight ahead from their porch. It was just a dense forest where there was absolutely no one that should have been in there. Eric immediately, when he sees the lights, he thinks there's a poacher on his property, someone illegally hunting on his property. And so he gets Sean, his son, who did not live with them, but was staying the night that night, 
he gets him to come outside and say, hey, do you think that's a poacher down there at the edge of our tree line? And Sean's like, I don't know, maybe. Eric decides that he wants to go tell this person to leave his property. And so he asks Sean to come with him. They figured they would just get to the edge of the property and yell out, hey, this is private property, you need to leave. As they're walking across the field and they're getting closer to the tree line, the lights, those pulsating lights begin to fade and disappear back into the woods. And they get all the way up to the tree line and they can't see any lights at all. Even though at this point, standing on the edge of the forest, forest, Eric and Sean are fairly confident that this poacher has left. They decide, just to be sure, let's walk a little ways into the woods. Even though it's totally dark, we're not going to get lost. We'll walk a little ways into the woods and just continue to yell, this is private property, so they really do leave. And so they begin walking, and it's and it's a very dense forest. Lots of low-hanging limbs. It's not somewhere that's easy to walk. There's no walking trails or anything like that. And they walk, you know, 10, 15 meters into the woods, and then they hear what sounds like someone walking parallel to them, maybe 15 meters away from them on their left. And they both stop and they look. They didn't want to take any chance that they were being stalked by a predator. And so they thought, you know what? The lights are gone. I don't know what animal this is. Let's just get out of here. About a month goes by and Nathan, who is Chelsea's boyfriend, was staying with the family at the farm. And it was the first nice spring day. I mean, it was a very dark and dreary winter. Maine winters tend to be that way. And so that weekend, Nathan and Chelsea decide, let's go walk around the woods. So they take the two family dogs and they start walking across that big field in front of the house into the forest, the same area where Sean and Eric have been looking for those lights and then heard what sounded like an animal that was near them. And so at first, Chelsea has the dogs on leashes, but they get to the forest and she lets them off their leash to let them go run around and go crazy because they've been cooped up because of the winter time as well. The two dogs instantly take off running for about 100 meters and then they come to a dead stop right outside this big mound. It looks like a dirt mound, but they get up close to it and they can tell that it's actually more like a den. There are these huge pieces of wood that have been leaned into like a lean-to type structure with moss and dirt and grass put all over the outside. I mean, it looks like a very intentionally made mound and there's a circular hole that's been created right on the front of it. And the dogs have stopped right outside and they're poking their heads in and smelling into this hole. And Nathan and Chelsea are looking at this thinking, who did this? Is this like a hunter's thing? Is this something a hunter might make? Would an animal make this? This seems really big for some animal to make this, but it definitely was made on purpose, whatever it is. And so Nathan, he just kind of looks down into this den, but it's totally dark. And he thinks he hears growling coming from inside of the den. And so without any hesitation, he goes, we gotta go. I don't know what's living in there, but we gotta go. And so they take the dogs, they put them back on leashes, and the two of them get out of the forest as quickly as they can. When Nathan and Chelsea came back to the house, they told Eric and Shelly, and actually Sean was there too, and they said, hey, we found this den of some kind out in the middle of the woods, basically straight out from your front porch. And that's when Eric and Sean said, well, about a month ago, we were out in that same area, and we could have sworn we heard some animal stalking us. A couple of months go by and Eric and Shelly are sitting on their front porch having their coffee ritual. And there was just this low mist that kind of hung over the entire field. And as they're sitting there, they're commenting on how creepy it was. And what started as just kind of a friendly discussion about the general creepiness took a turn when they realized that they couldn't hear any wildlife. No crickets, no animals, no anything. And normally at night, because they were out here all the time, it was humming with life. And so Shelly had this high powered flashlight that she always had out with her and she starts scanning the property, not knowing what she's looking for, but it just seemed really odd that they couldn't hear any wildlife. But after she scans across the whole field, she doesn't see anything. And so she puts her flashlight down and just starts talking to Eric about whatever they normally talked about over coffee at night. Eric would say in numerous interviews that for whatever reason, when she put that flashlight down, he suddenly felt like they were in danger. He's looking out, he doesn't see anything. And then all of a sudden he just says, you know what? We gotta go inside. I don't know what it is, but we gotta go inside. And Shelly's like, come on, I wanna stay out here for a little bit longer. We'll go in in a few minutes. And Eric stands up and he's like, no, go inside. And he tries to grab her to kind of push her into the house. And she's kind of fighting against him. And then all of a sudden Shelly stops. And she goes, did you hear that? And Eric immediately knew that whatever it was, it's the reason he had that sudden feeling of being in danger. Eric turns around and he can't see anything because it's too dark. Shelly grabs her flashlight and she begins scanning the tree line. And she gets to the field and gets about halfway across the field right in front of them and she stops. Because right in the middle of the field are three creatures that look like wolves. These huge creatures that are looking right at them. Two others join them. So there's five wolf-like creatures that are staring at them right from the middle of their field. She says to Eric, what are those? And Eric, who's an experienced hunter, he has no idea. 
He goes, I think they're bears. They could be wolves. We gotta go inside. And so Shelly's just holding the light and they start charging directly at her so fast that she wasn't able to keep the light on them. They were already halfway across the field. They go inside, they shut the door and they lock it. And without saying a word, the two of them make their rounds across the entire bottom floor, lock every window, close every blind, make sure everything is shut. There was something different about these five creatures. The way they started running towards them, it just felt like they were targeting Eric and Shelly. And so even after the house had been secured, they didn't feel safe. And so they're standing in the middle of their cabin and Eric's saying, my guns are in the in the barn. I can't, we have no protection. And Shelly is like, whatever you do, do not go out there. We don't know what these are. It could be a bear, it could be a wolf, we don't know. Don't go out there. Shelly goes upstairs, she shuts off all the lights, she makes sure all the windows are shut. And then she goes to Chelsea's room, her daughter, and she wakes her up and she says, hey, come here, you gotta look at this. And they go to the window and they kind of like poke their head into the window because they don't wanna like totally open it up and stare out because they don't want the creatures to see them but they're kind of poking their head out the window and she's like, look, and standing on the gravel are these five creatures that are just standing in a row looking directly at the house. It was like they were waiting for them to come out the front door. They were just patiently standing there looking at the house. It did not look like normal animal behavior at all. And as she's looking, one of the animals looks up at Shelly in the window and the creature stands on its two legs. It gets on its hind legs and looks at her and Shelly gasps and falls over because the creature's like eight feet tall. And so Shelly's on the ground looking at Chelsea and she can't believe what she just saw. It's like her brain can't process that this creature, one, had even seen her. They barely had their head up in the window, but that it stood on its hind legs, that it was so big. What are they doing sitting in a row right on the, on the outside of the house waiting for us? What's going on here? And so Shelly tells Chelsea, get in your bed. Don't go to your windows. Don't leave this room. And that's when Shelly also remembers that she hasn't heard her two dogs and she's worried they might be outside. And so she starts quietly walking all along the top floor looking for her dog. She's calling to her two dogs and they don't come out, goes into the master bedroom and finds her two dogs hiding in the corner of the room next to each other. Like they're startled by whatever it is outside. Meanwhile, Eric was pacing downstairs thinking he needed to go to the barn and he needed to get his guns to protect the family. But he knew that between his own disability, he can barely walk very fast and he'd have to unlock the barn and then he'd have to pull down the gun case, unlock that. All the while he's exposed to these animals that are out there. And so the next best thing in his mind is maybe he could run outside, get in his truck and back the truck up to the front door. And then he could get his wife and his daughter to come out, jump in the car and they could drive away. So he just goes to the window and he pulls the blinds aside to look outside and those five creatures are now gone. They're not sitting on the gravel path right in front of the house. He doesn't know where they are, but they're not in front of the house. And so he closes the blinds and he's like, well, I don't know where they are. It's too, it's too dangerous to go out there. He starts pacing some more and he goes back to look and he sees them back in the field where they first saw them, all five. You can see all five, they're facing the house still, but he can see them because the moon has now popped through and he's got illumination on the field and he can see all five. And he's like, okay, maybe if I just keep my eye on them, I can open the door, run out, get the car, back it up without them seeing me. And so without telling Shelly, he opens the door and he goes onto the front porch and he sees them out in the field. He's got a good line of sight on them. Quiet as he can, he walks down the steps and he makes his way over to his truck, which is about 10 meters away. And as he's getting closer and closer to his truck, he's got his eye on the creatures that are in the field. They haven't moved. They apparently haven't seen him. He gets to the driver's side of his truck and he's got his keys out and he's kind of fumbling to hit the unlock button. And then his motion sensor light kicks on. And he's so on edge being out there. When the light kicks on, he drops his keys because he's so startled and the first thing he does is he looks towards the field and he sees that one of the five creatures is now standing on its hind legs looking at him directly before he even bends down to get his keys he sees them all running towards him he reaches down he grabs his keys he runs back to the house as fast as he can and he gets inside and slams it right as he can hear them crossing the gravel right in front of the house and he hears them bound onto the porch and start running around the wraparound porch he's too scared to even look in the window so he ducks down to get out of view Shelly, who was upstairs, can hear everything going on and she yells, Eric, what's going on? And he goes, stay up there, stay up there. Shelly, Eric, Chelsea, everyone's just frozen waiting, knowing that these creatures are right on the other side, walking along his wraparound porch. And after a while, he hears the footsteps of these creatures leave the porch and go back onto the gravel area. And at some point he pokes his head up and he looks and all five are sitting there just facing the house, waiting for them to come out of the house.
And so he scurries up the stairs to where Shelly and Chelsea are and they just are so scared. So they decide they gotta call the police. If nothing else, the police will drive up and their vehicle might scare away these creatures. But on the phone, Shelly lets on that what they're really scared about is some thing on their property. In fact, it's five creatures, things running around outside their property. And immediately the police officer who's responding to this, he's like, all right, well, are you sure it's not a moose? Are you sure it's not a bear? And finally she's like, no, can you please just come over here? And he's like, listen, ma'am, just keep your door shut, keep your windows shut, and I'm sure it'll be fine. And ultimately that's how the call ends. They're on their own. The family felt helpless. And Eric especially felt really frustrated because he can't protect his family. He doesn't have a weapon. He can't get to his vehicle. They're just trapped. And so they decide the only thing we can do is barricade ourselves inside of the house. And so for the next 30 minutes, they put heavy furniture in front of all the doors and the windows. They blocked everything as best as they could. They got kitchen knives and they got an ax that they had inside to chop some wood. And so they go upstairs, they lock themselves in the master bedroom with their weapons and their dogs and they get on the bed and they just decide all we can do is wait until the sun comes up. During the time they were barricading their house, they would look out from time to time and they would see the five creatures just sitting on that gravel area right in front of their house, just waiting for them. When they finally went upstairs and barricaded themselves in that room, they immediately heard the creatures move off of the gravel and they heard a couple of them at least walk onto the porch and start pacing around the porch. And it's totally silent besides the sounds of these creatures. And they were clearly communicating with each other. They were bumping into walls and then they were howling at each other. There was clear communication happening where they were trying to coordinate some sort of attack on the family. Now the way the house was set up is there was a second floor roof and then the first floor was a little bit wider than the second floor and had its own kind of separate roof. And after a while, the creatures stopped walking on the porch. They left the porch and it's just silence. And then they would hear them jump onto that first roof. The scary thing about this is that if you walked around the roof, you could actually look into the second floor windows. And so they're laying there and periodically they'd be looking out their window. There was windows on either side of the room they were in, but there was a thin curtain between them and the window. And so from time to time, these creatures would walk past their windows and they would stop. They'd put their paws up onto the window and they would look inside but there was a very thin sheet between them and the glass. So they couldn't, they couldn't see the creature and the creature couldn't see them. All night, they're listening to these creatures running around. And sometimes they'd hear really loud scratching, like they had figured something out and they were trying to burrow their way into the house. But after a whole night of this, they never actually broke the glass. They never got inside the house. As the sun started to come up in the morning, the creatures jumped off the roof and they could hear them running away. And for about an hour, they didn't hear anything outside. The sun's come up and they felt safe again. And so they left their room, they go downstairs and they finally open it up and all over their property are signs of huge creatures that had been on their property. Massive footprints with huge claws at the end. They found tufts of hair that had gotten caught on fence posts. And even scarier is they found all these points on the house in particular on the second floor when they were walking on that roof where there was clear markings that they had tried to burrow into the house. There were these deep seated scratch marks into the side of the house. The front door had been scratched apart. I mean, it was very clear that whatever these creatures were, they were trying to get into the house, but they had just been unsuccessful. This experience was so traumatic for the family that they sold the house and they moved very quickly after that. And they have not experienced anything like that since they left. So what do you think those creatures were? Was that a bear, a wolf or something else? Let me know in the comments what you think and I will get back to all the early commenters. So get in there and give me your best theory. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't done this already, please waterboard the like button and subscribe to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my weekly uploads. If you wanna get in touch with me, you can direct message me on Instagram or Twitter. My username on both those platforms is johnballin416. I'm also very active on TikTok where my handle is mrballin. Got a ton of content over there as well. If you have a story submission, whether it's your own personal story or just a suggestion, please submit it to our subreddit just called Mr. Ballin. It's linked in the description below and I read it every day. So if I intentionally use your story suggestion that I find on there, I will absolutely credit you. So whether I see you on Reddit, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, here on YouTube or some combination, I'm just incredibly thankful for your support. And until next time, guys, that's going to do it. See ya.